Today we're taking a look at Keynote, create your presentations, put it from your iPad to your Mac, next on iPad 365. Hey everybody, Jeffrey Powers here. Welcome to iPad 365, the show where we look at apps to keep your iPad a play. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new Keynote application and all its functionality where you can now work on your application, on your Keynote, whether it be an iPad or an iPhone or a Mac or even a PC. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. First of all, I want to let you know the uh, Twitter handle is iPad365. iPad365 is the Twitter handle. And of course, show at iPad-365.com for, uh, for the email address. And of course, iPad-365.com is the name of the website that you can go to to find all the cool iPad apps that I've reviewed in the last uh, coming on two years here. It's, uh, it's been two years since, uh, since the first episode of iPad 365. Long way since we did the first episode, including I don't do a seven-day-a-week schedule anymore. That was, I thought I could do that, but yeah, it turned out probably was not a great idea. So anyway, let's talk a little bit about this. You know, we're, we're exploring some apps, and we're exploring new apps and old apps, once again on iOS 7, because they've changed immensely since they first came out. And case in point is this one right here. It's called Keynote. It's Apple's version of a presentation software. Now I use this software to put together a presentation that I actually did the day before on Google Glass, the presentation I call The Power of Glass. And I talk a lot about uh, about different things. I even include iPhones and iPads into the, into the conversation. But I needed something that could move from one device to the other because I wasn't going to always work on my Mac for a presentation. Now, I have used many presentation softwares before, including, of course, PowerPoint and then Prezi, which is the online presentation software, which works really well. But I wanted to try Keynote out and I wanted to see what the new functionalities are for this software. Now, the coolest thing is the fact I can go onto my iPad and do the editing put it up into iCloud, and then of course go over to my Mac. As you can see, this is what I see on my iPad right now, but if I end out of reflector here and flip over to the keynote on the Mac, there's the actual presentation that I put onto my Mac, which ended up being the presentation device. So there's also the ability to actually use the PowerPoint through iCloud. You go to your iCloud account, you uh, select your PowerPoint presentation, and you could actually download it. Now the only setback to that is it needs to be 100 megabytes or smaller in a presentation. So if you have a lot of great pictures and interaction, then you might not be able to present on the PC side just yet. I'm hoping that Apple will lift that and actually raise that to at least a 200 megabyte limit, but we'll see what happens from now. Right now, only 100 megabytes uh, if you want to hook it up to your PC and present from there. So here it is. I, I did the power glass. I, I did some templates. We'll just create a new one. So we'll go over to presentations, and then we'll say create a presentation. We can choose from many different templates. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do a regular black presentation here where you, you see the frames. You can uh, you tap, and you can type in there. Oops, double tap to edit. That's what it says. And you can type in there, hey you like that and you can double tap there uh, get off of my cloud and there you have your first presentation a little uh, plus button on the bottom you can add different types of slides uh, whether you want it it's fully blank slide or if you want all text or if you just want a title slide or if you want a picture slide like this picture right there and we can say this guy is happy he just bought this land. Something silly, you know. There's a little accessory for you right there. I, I don't know, whatever you want to do. You can actually add stuff. You can also add different things. You can uh, select an object and tap the button to format it. So I can, uh, I can do that and I can say, I want this formatted to have a picture frame, a uh, regular frame or whatnot. I want to take the image and I want to do some alpha to it. Um, don't like the way it looks. Let's just uh, let's just make it all red. Or so that's different options you can do there. You can also do some uh, arrangement. Move the front to back. Back to and that's all for layers. Uh, moving from front to back. You've got some tools to do some transitions and builds. So we'll add some transition. This one we'll build in, and we'll just say anvil right here. So when we go to pre present it here, it will uh, it'll show 
just like that. Boom, anvil. <laughs> it's kind of nice. Or you can blur it in or whatnot. We can hit play, and you can actually see it blur in to the uh, to the presentation. Um, uh, instant instant gratification right there to see what it's going to do, and, uh, and and choose the one that you want to see happen. So we'll just undo that for now, and we'll say done. We can also share this uh, up on iCloud. We can send a copy. We can put it into iTunes. Um, open it in another app if we need to. If there's one program, of, like let's say we're editing a video and we're putting the a video into the keynote session, we can uh, then bring that in. Of course, we can uh, edit it in PowerPoint, PDF, and Keynote as well as other apps. And then when we're ready to play, all we have to do is hit the play button and poof, we tap that once and this guy is going to blur in like that. And that's pretty much it for the uh, presentation. As you can see, I did just a couple things and my presentation snapped a lot better than it did before. In fact, if I go back to my first presentation, the Power of Glass, I could actually, I didn't put any, uh, any, anything like that in there, so I could have actually taken this. This is the home screen to uh, Google Glass, and I could have added a tool in here um, for the transitions and said I want to build it in that way, and we'll do the anvil just like that. Play. And poof, there it is, just like that. So we're done here. And now when I when I present it, we'll hit the play button. And of course, this is the power of Google Glass. Boom, just like that. <laughs> anyway, it is Keynote. It's really cool. It's not free. The iPad app is $9.99 in the App Store. The Mac version is $19.99. And of course, if you want to do any editing through your iCloud on your PC, it's, it's all cloud-based. So that application is technically free, but of course you need an iCloud account and you need to start a Keynote in either your iPad Keynote or your Mac, Pro, uh, Mac Keynote and go from there. So name of the app is Keynote. Check it out in the App Store now. You know, the best part of these apps is the fact that they now have that iCloud access. There's only one small problem, and that is Apple only gives you 5 gigabytes worth of iCloud storage. I would figure, I bought a 32 gigabyte iPad, and I'm going to be getting a 32 gigabyte iPad Air um, when it comes out this Thursday. I have a MacBook Pro, which I've paid, I've paid several thousand dollars for this, this stuff. I've had an iPhone before it got stolen, but, you know, it would be nice to see more than five gigabytes because I have a feeling I'm going to go above five gigabytes very, very soon. Anyway, that is this episode of iPad 365. If you have any questions, feel free to Twitter me over at iPad365. That's iPad365. Of course, the email is show at iPad-365.com if you'd like to suggest an app or you have something that you want me to show off on the show. My name is Jeffrey Powers. Thanks a lot for watching and listening over on Stitcher or iTunes because you can always get the audio version and the video version as well. We'll see you next time, and until then, you guys geek out and take care.